Okay, good afternoon. I can call this um, first meeting of the Ag Committee uh, to order. Uh, this meeting is going to be held in accordance with uh, House Rule 10.01, which is posted online. And we can proceed with the roll call, please. Okay, Chair Sundin. Here. Vice Chair Vang. Present. Uh, Representative Anderson. Here. Representative Burkle. He's having audio issues, but he is present. Uh, Representative Eklund. Present. Representative Rick Hansen. Here. Representative Jessica Hansen. Present. Representative Cleborn. Present. Representative Lippert. Present. Representative Lewick. I think he's on. Representative Miller. Here. Representative Nelson. Present. Representative Thompson. Present. All right, uh, everyone is present. Okay, hey, thank you. Uh, we do have a quorum then. Uh, again, welcome. I'm looking forward to working with everyone, including uh, Vice Chair Samantha Bang. We will be leaning on her from time to time. It's a uh, trick having her here. And the lead GOP, my friend, Paul Anderson. Uh, and everyone else, I invite participation and input all along the way. We will continue to use these remote meetings for the foreseeable future. While it has been successful, successfully used for a while, it's still new to someone, including the chair. Uh, so we may need to slow process down and uh, give time to hear from everyone during the committee process. Uh, the meetings and proceedings are all open to the public on multiple platforms, which links on the House Public Information website. We will continue to expect all conversations and recognition to go through the chair. With that, we can get to it. Uh, we have introductions uh, set for just a few minutes here. Uh, please identify yourself or when you're called upon, uh, just add a few comments about yourself that might be interesting to the rest of the committee. So uh, again, I'm uh, Chair Mike Sundin from Carleton County. I grew up on a dairy farm up in Kuchichin County. Uh, I'm particularly interested in the work we can do here to uh, sustain the uh, egg uh, industry in the state of Minnesota. I think everybody here realizes the importance of uh, uh, the egg industry, their contribution to the economy here in Minnesota. And I'm particularly interested in some of the uh, uh, organic farming opportunities that are present throughout the state. So it's not all it's about big egg, it's, uh, it's about sustainable egg uh, throughout the state as well. So that's uh, enough about me. Uh, Vice Chair Bang, please. Thank you, Chair Sundin. I'm Vice Chair Bang. Uh, this is my second time serving on this committee, so I'm very excited uh, to see some new faces and also uh, a lot of familiar faces as well. Uh, I represent 40B, uh, District 40B, Brooklyn Center, and um, just talking a little bit about what I did in this committee, I carried a lot of the hemp legislation and I look forward to um, continuing that work um, and supporting our farmers in the state. Thank you. Terrific. Representative Anderson, please. Thank you, Chair Sundin. It's gonna be a pleasure working with you as well this, this year by any of them on the Ag Committee. Um, I am a farmer, I live up in the uh, Glenwood, Starbuck, Alexandria area, run about 900 acres, raise corn, soybeans, and a little bit of wheat, and um, used to raise cattle, but uh, our kids have left home and I needed more help to run cattle operations, so they have, uh, they're not there anymore. But um, I have a passion for agriculture. I've been on the committee ever since I've been here at the Capitol. This is my, getting my seventh term in the House, and uh, 
really enjoy the, uh, for the most part, nonpartisanship in agriculture and look forward to having that continue uh, this session. And as we get things done, and uh, as the chair mentioned, uh, the importance of agriculture in the state of Minnesota. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Terrific. Uh, is uh, Representative Burkle available at this point? Mr. Chair, he's still getting set up, so we can I'll take come back that to as, I'll take that as a no then. Thank you. Uh, Representative Eckman, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I represent District 3A. I've, uh, it's a district that uh, the chairman grew up in on the dairy farm. And a uh, little known fact is the chair and I graduated high school together, and there's a little, uh, little question about who's the best looking graduate of Class 76. Maybe the, maybe, the, maybe the committee can decide that this year. But <laughs> anyway, uh, I've been on the Ag Committee since I've been in the legislature. And like I said, I'm starting my fourth term. I'm looking forward to the good work that we can do. Okay. Thank you, uh, Representative Eklund. Could you comment on who grows the best potatoes in Kuchichin County? <laughs> I'm still using them, Mr. Chair. They come from the Sundane Farm. Okay. <laughs> Terrific. Representative Hansen, please. Hansen R. <clears throat> Hanson R. Okay. R. Hanson R. Thank you. Uh, Representative Rick Hanson. I represent uh, South St. Paul, West St. Paul, Mendota, Lilydale, and Mendota Heights. Uh, I grew up on a farm in Freeborn County. Uh, I still own farmland in Freeborn County and Fillmore County. Uh, and uh, I believe I've been on the Ag Committee my whole time here when I was elected in 2004. Um, yeah, issues, issues that I'm concerned about are... Uh, conservation uh, related to agriculture and also um, consumers uh, concerns on agriculture. My district is very engaged and uh, doesn't hate, uh, doesn't hesitate to uh, ask me questions about food and water and, and uh, how those interact. So uh, pleased to be here and hope we can do good things. Thank you. Uh, next would be Representative Hanson J. Hello, thank you, Chair Sundin. My name is Jess Hansen. I represent the city of Savage in the northwest part of Burnsville in District 56A. And I am a freshman this year. This is my uh, first committee meeting. So I am pleased to be here and excited to get to work. Uh, my areas of interest, I grew up in Farmington and Lakeville, Minnesota. Uh, so a, a semi-rural farming community and making sure that we're always making, uh, fighting for justice, food justice is what brought me into political work. And so I'm looking forward to continuing that um, as well as what Rick said to conservation um, and what uh, Vice Chair Bang mentioned. I'm also very interested in making sure that we can uh, continue to move along hemp legislation right here in Minnesota. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, Representative Ginny Cleborn. Thank you, Chair. Um, I am Jenny Cleborn. I represent Plymouth, which is in the Northwest suburbs. And it's an interesting space to be in. Um, I'm a lifelong um, agricultural enthusiast and understand the need to bridge the space in food and agriculture. And it's a major concern for my district as we have many large food and ag companies located in Plymouth. So it's exciting to be with you again for the second term. And I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Uh, we also have Representative Todd Leppert. I'll be leaning on him uh, as a resource as, through this uh, committee uh, as well. So Todd Leppert, please. Representative Leppert. Uh, thanks, Chair Sundin. So it's good to be uh, on this committee again. I represent uh, the Northfield, Lonsdale, Dundas, Montgomery areas just south of the Twin Cities. I've lived in, I grew up in a small town. I've served as a pastor in small communities, uh, both in Wisconsin and in Minnesota. And I'm very interested in um, how um, successful farmers uh, leads to healthier and stronger and more vibrant rural communities. So that's um, at the center of my interest and passion. And I look forward to working on this committee again. Thank you. Uh, Representative Lewick, please. Well, uh, well, thank you. Uh... Chair Sundin, congratulations on the new job. Uh, uh, I'm Dale Loic. I represent District uh, 10B, which is all of Aiken County and most of uh, rural Crow Wing County up north of Mille Lacs Lake. It's one of the, not as big as uh, Representative Eklund's district, but uh, it's a pretty big district. 
Uh, we've got agriculture, we've got forestry, uh, and uh, off and on we have some level of mining. I grew up on a dairy farm like a couple of my colleagues. Uh, my dad worked full time in the mines, so it was myself, my little brother, and my mother that did a lot of the milking. Uh, I always had a passion for agriculture. Uh, I raise beef cattle now on 340 acres uh, up. Uh, actually, a piece of that's my folks' farm, and another piece of it is my grandparents' farm. So I always uh, interested in making sure we uh, put our best foot forward for agriculture in the state of Minnesota. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Miller, please. Hi, Chair. Thank you, and, and welcome to the committee. I look forward to uh, serving under you on this committee. Uh, my name is Tim Miller. And this is the beginning of my fourth term. I, I serve uh, counties, Swift, Chippewa, Renville, most of Renville and four townships in Candy, Ohio County. I'm deep rural, uh, deep ag. Renville County is typically the largest producer of corn in the state of Minnesota. Uh, we have lots of sugar beets and dairy, and we have a lot of, so ag is definitely at the top of our list. It's a driving industry in our area. So I'm very thankful uh, to be on this committee, um, I uh, represent small farms, medium farms, big farms, and I think that can all be relative. A good friend of mine said uh, a big farm is the guy down the street that has more acres than me, and that's the big farm. We have lots of, lots of things that are changing in agriculture, and being an agriculture committee, uh, my, my job and my role is to defend agriculture. Um, it does act responsibly. I, I hear people sometimes say that it does not, and uh, I don't think anyone on this committee does that. I certainly hope they don't, or they shouldn't be on this committee. Um, and uh, so I look forward to promoting and doing what's best that we can advance agriculture. Probably one of the big, I think it's officially the second biggest industry in the state of Minnesota. So we have, might have a small budget when it comes to finance, but we have a big responsibility in the state. Thank you. Representative Nelson N. Hello, uh, Nathan Nelson. I represent uh, 11B. Uh, I live uh, east of Hinckley on a farm, third generation there. We have uh, beef cattle and uh, so mostly Angus and Semitol. And then we also grow corn, soybeans, uh, and quite a bit of hay. Goes back to the fed, feed the cows. Uh, Pine County, except for two townships, and half of Kennebec County is in my district. And I see um, the commissioner is uh, in the audience as well, and and uh, he is one of my constituents and a great great ally for agriculture. I think uh, it's done a did a lot of good work, and I think there's a lot of things that agriculture has a great story to tell, and I don't think that it has always been. I think many of us in agriculture have been busy doing the work and haven't really been telling our story about the great things that the agriculture does for conservation. And as I think of what my practices of my grandpa did in his day that uh, now we kind of look at it and shake our heads and why, why were they doing that? But at the same time, 75 years ago, that was best practices of the day. And we continually work towards adopting new practices and, and, and improving and I think agriculture is a great story to tell, and uh, I want to be part of that story. And that's uh, is uh, I raised the fourth generation on the on this farm. Um, it's something that uh, I want them to be able to hopefully carry that torch on, and and continue to tell that story. So uh, glad to be part of the committee, and uh, thanks for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Representative. John Thompson, please. Thank you so much, uh, Representative Sundin. It's an honor to be here and to serve with you and everyone here. Uh, it's an honor. Uh, I represent uh, District 67A, which is uh, the east side of St. Paul. Uh, uh, Tim Mahoney uh, used to, used to uh, don this, this prestigious seat. Uh, so there's some big shoes in the field. <laughs> uh, I, I do know that agriculture is, is definitely the second second biggest industry in the state. Uh, you know, how many farms we have in St. Paul? You know, so absolutely none, I don't think, in St. Paul. But here's an opportunity for me to 
to speak to to you guys and to, to ask you guys to work with me also and to help. And you know, you, 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 I've, all, I've always been taught that if you give a man a fish, uh, you know, he'll, he'll come back because he wants some more fish. But if you teach him how to fish, he'll probably learn how to do it and, and, and definitely won't need help anymore. And so when we talk about urban agriculture, urban farming, and pathways and creating career pathways to, again, what we call uh, uh, at-risk youth. They're at risk. I, I say this over and over again. They're at risk if we don't help them. You know, uh, and my community will definitely be in, a, in, a, in an epidemic after the pandemic. But I do know that agriculture is a booming industry. Uh, jobs, uh, training, you know, uh, and, and to also get a chance to take some of these uh, urban children out of the environment that they see every day would be saving some of these kids' lives from some of the shootings that we see every day in this state. Yo, and I honestly can say, if you give a man an opportunity to make decent decent money, uh, he'd be too tired to be shooting at each other uh, when they get off work. All of a sudden, that, that night at the bar would turn into a 12-pack in his refrigerator. And I say this with all sincerity that I look forward to working with you guys, because I know that I, I represent the state of Minnesota. And so I need every representative from the state of Minnesota to look at uh, uh, urban Minnesota also and some of the problems that we face here every day. Uh, we can fix a lot of it uh, piece by piece. I know, you know God gave us the ability to move mountains. He didn't say we can move the whole mountain. We can just move them one rock at a time. And so I look forward to helping move mountains with you guys. And I thank you for having me. Terrific. Thank you, Representative Thompson. Uh, we have uh, staff introductions. I, we can kick it off with uh, House Research. Uh, Colby Sullivan, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. I'm Colby Sullivan, of the nonpartisan House Research Office. This is my 16th session staffing the Agriculture Committees, and I'm very happy to be back. Please feel free to reach out to me with any agricultural bills, amendments, or research that you may need. Thank you. Uh, Ken Savory, fiscal staff, am I pronouncing that correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, you are. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ken Savory, the nonpartisan um, fiscal analyst for the Agriculture Committee this year. I also cover higher education and also cover the uh, housing area. Um, this is my seventh session at the legislature and my sixth doing agriculture. And I'm uh, looking forward to working with you all and feel free, feel, feel, um, free to reach out and um, if you have questions, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Bennett Smith with the DFL Research, please. Hello everyone, my name is Bennett Smith. I'm the DFL Researcher and this is my second biennium working on the committee and I'm coming to you live from my parents' farm. Terrific. Harry Miracle, GOP thank Research. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Harry Miracle, House Republican Research. Uh, this is my sixth year up at the Capitol. I cover agriculture as well as housing and capital investment. Okay, terrific. And Kyle Smith, the committee uh, legislative assistant. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm Kyle Smith. I'm the committee legislative assistant. This will be my second biennium and uh, also second uh, session with Representative Sundin. Looking forward to it. I'm amazed that you came back. <laughs> Nancy. Nancy Conley, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. I'm Nancy Conley. I've been with the House for, this is my 34th year, and this is my second term as uh, CA for the committee, and I look forward to working with you all. And Mr. Chair, before I leave, reminder that Representative Burkle is back in gear now. Terrific. Representative Burkle, would you like to uh, uh, take a minute and introduce yourself to the committee, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sorry, apologize for that. Uh, Bruce has my computer now. We're going to figure things out, but I'm on my phone for the moment. Um, hi, everyone. I'm a fourth generation turkey producer. I've been a turkey grower up in Northwest Minnesota all my life. Uh, I have a special interest on the committee to, uh, to be more of a voice for animal agriculture. I'm on the Board of Animal Health's uh, Emergency Disease Management Committee. I uh, had the personal um, nightmare of working my way through the high path avian influenza outbreak back in 2015 on my farm. So I've got uh, some experience there on the, with the EDMC. Um, spent 10 years at Minnesota Turkey Growers Association. 
uh, and 10 years at the National Turkey Federation level. Uh, so, my, so my ag interests really are, are livestock and, and animal ag. Uh, appreciate the chance to, to be here and, and looking forward to working with everyone. Terrific, uh, thanks. Back to the committee staff, uh, Nate Gottlieb uh, with House Public Information. Is on the call in the meeting? Or maybe not. Okay. Uh, can we have the overview from uh, committee accounts and budget by Ken Savory? Um, Mr. Chair and members, I believe uh, Ms. Connolly was going to share the screen and bring up the PowerPoint, and that is, looks like that's there, so I think we're in good shape. Please continue. Again, for the record, my name is Ken Savory, nonpartisan fiscal analyst, um, and I'm going to give a brief, approximately 10-minute overview of the accounts and um, jurisdiction of the Ag, Ag Finance Committee. And uh, if we go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Having some trouble. Yeah. Great. Um, so, in terms of accounts or committee jurisdiction, the ag finance area has four or three large primary accounts and one uh, smaller, smaller area. Obviously, the Department of Agriculture, including the RFA or Rural Finance Authority, the Board of Animal Health or Animal Health Board the Agricultural Utilization Research Board, or AURI. And just from a historical perspective, the committee has appropriated from an agency level to the Horticultural Society, although currently um, that isn't really the case. So we can proceed to the next slide. Um, if we could go back one slide. Thank you. Um, in terms of financing for the committee, generally the committee will be working with the general fund, which is the home of tax receipts and deposits in the state treasury. Additionally, the committee will also be working with the agricultural fund, which is a fund containing many of the Department of Ag's uh, fee-based programs. Additionally, the remediation fund is a, is a fund the committee may use or, or deal with. It contains money from certain fees and proceeds from bond sales and is used for um, super fund and closed landfill cleanup activities. Additionally, um, federal funds are a component of the, of the ag budget. Um, these are obviously from the federal government and are appropriated to be spent. Um, a process for the legislative use and review of federal funds established in state statute. State statute. And from time to time, the committee will make reference to the special revenue fund, which is just a, a fund made, of mis made up of miscellaneous accounts. We can go to the next slide. There'll be three primary appropriation types that the committee will utilize when um, passing a finance bill or an individual finance bill. Um, the most, most common one for this committee would be the direct appropriation. And it is essentially kind of what it sounds like. A direct appropriation example would be the committee passing a bill for um, general fund money directly to the Department of Agriculture to say to deal with an issue, something like avian influenza. Additionally, the committee may work with um, they work with statutory appropriations, and these statutory appropriations are a little bit different in that they don't have to be renewed every biennium, um, so they're not really part of the session law, um, and so they auth authorize kind of an ongoing payment from the treasury to a program. Then we can go to the next slide, and lastly, and most uncommonly, I guess in our in the ag committee is an open appropriation, which is kind of just what it sounds like. It's a form of statutory appropriation where the level of funding necessary to fulfill the obligation is made each fiscal year, meaning that as costs come up, the legislature is authorized that funds be given to this particular program or activity. And in my opinion, a really good um, example of that is firefighting in the environment area. So as issues with firefighting come up, um, an open appropriation pays for those activities on an ongoing basis. Can we go to the next slide? Um, this, this pie chart is, a, is general fund spending in FY 2021. 
and it's broken up by subject area, committee area. I realize the type may be a little small. Um, so I guess if you have the PDF, you can zoom in a little bit if you like. But I just wanted to point out kind of the lay of the land in terms of the way ag kind of interacts or is part of the entire state budget. You'll see two large pieces of the pie, one in kind of a navy blue and one in kind of a burnt or a light orange. Those are the K-12 education and health and human, human services pieces of the pie. And those take up quite a bit of quite a bit of the pie. If you look just to the lower left, you'll see um, a piece of the pie that's labeled agriculture and housing. And then see an inscription under that that says 0.5%. Um, if you were to break the two pieces apart, the ag part and the housing part, the agriculture part would be approximately 0.3% of that 0.5%. So that's the kind of um, money we're dealing with from a general fund perspective in an approximately $47 billion, billion dollar budget. And I guess I would just say that the reason why ag and housing in this case are kind of put together is that the last omnibus um, finance bill had both of those particular budget areas along with rural development broadband in one larger omnibus bill. So depending on how bills are passed and how conference committees are, are uh, put together, that can often affect how the budget is viewed and the pieces of the pie are arranged. And so we can go to the next slide. Uh, this next slide is an agriculture, um, excuse me, is a general fund expenditures for the Ag Committee um, or for the Ag budget area on a biennial basis starting in the early 90s and then going up to the projections based on the most recent um, Feb or November forecast in FY21 and FY23, 22 and 23. Um, as you can see, Ag funding has changed pretty dramatically over the course of the, of the early 90s to now to the early 2020s. You'll see in the mid to late 90s that the ag budget climbed up pretty substantial climbed up pretty substantially to its to its peak of about 147 million dollars and that was um, due mostly to a prominent um, program in 96 and 97 huh, to payments for ethanol and those ethanol payments peaked in 2000 2001 and then the program wound down and the budget as you can see kind of went down as well huh? you'll also see some of the major kind of economic budget and budget issues that the state has kind of gone through over the course of time. So you see some of the, some peaking in 08 and 09 and some leveling out as the state emerged from that recession. And then additional investments were made by the legislature and the governor over the course of the late 2000s and then into the 2020s. And so we can proceed to the next slide. And just this, um, this slide just kind of lays out the agriculture bill construction in terms of what the finance portion of the omnibus ag bill will look like. It will have appropriations through the Department of Agriculture broken into four larger divisions, protection services, promotion and marketing, value-added products, and admin and financial assistance. Additionally, there'll be appropriations for the Board of Animal Health, as well as appropriations for AURI. And then sometimes given on the year, there may be additional appropriations that the committee may wanna consider. Um, one example of that is um, additional appropriations related to say something like an animal disease outbreak or an additional initiative that may not fit into the three buckets um, that I listed before. And so we can go to the next slide. Um, here's just something that members can kind of look at as, as they would like. I won't go into too much depth, but um, this is kind of a summary of the 2019 session overview. So the most recent um, ag finance bill that left both bodies and then was eventually signed by the governor. Um, the title at the top you can see says agriculture, housing and rural development finance. That's just kind of left over from the construction of the, of the conference committee. Um, this chart doesn't have any housing appropriations or rural development broadband appropriations in it, but it just kind of gives the committee a flavor of what, um, what happens at the end of the year when the, when the bills are passed. And this is kind of a miniature spreadsheet that breaks out um, what the current biennium was what the base was for the biennium that the committee or the legislature was budgeting for and the percentage changes in terms of how those um, played out when the bill was uh, signed by the governor and into law. And additionally, if you look on the right hand side, I'll say enacted FY 22 and 23. Those are most commonly referred to with the legislature as the tails. And those, the tails is just a general kind of term for um, the biennium in which the legislature is planning for, not necessarily appropriating or budgeting for. So it's kind of a projection into the future on what a particular budget may look like um, if current law were to just carry forward. And then you can go to the next slide. 
I won't go through these in, in depth, um, but I will say that during the 2020 regular session, the even number due session, the um, legislature and the governor did make some changes and additional appropriations to um, agriculture areas. Um, one of them being some investments for the Second Harvest Heartland in response to COVID-19, an additional 50 million for the Rural Finance Authority um, through response with COVID-19 and how it has affected the economy of farmers and agriculture in general. Additionally, the, um, the legislature and the governor did use the tool known as the Coronavirus Relief Fund or CRF to fund various one-time appropriations in FY 2020 for a, a list of um, agricultural related um, programs ranging from farmer mental health, market loss, um, covering loan origination fees and establishing grant programs for meat and poultry processors and uh, several others. Additionally, there was some changes changes to the previous previous budget, and that was the repurpose of some funds from the agreed appropriation, which we'll um, get into later um, in future committee hearings, I imagine. But it was six hundred seventy five thousand dollars of that agreed money was utilized to um, purchase equipment for the VDL or Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory at the St. Paul campus of the University of Minnesota, and then additionally an additional hundred thousand dollars was freed up um, for farm safety programming. And we can go to the next slide. And additionally, through the, the um, several special sessions that occurred in the in the summer and fall and into the winter, uh, special session five um, provided some flexibility to utilize the previous coronavirus relief funds or CRF funds appropriations for loan origination fees and to use those to provide grants to our eligible farmers that were harmed by COVID-19. Additionally, in the seventh special session, um, these waived late, it waived uh, late license renewal fees for food handlers, wholesalers, manufacturers, and brokers for county year 2021. And by doing that, that does create a general for a general fund loss in FY 2021, totaling eight thousand dollars, and an additional forty six thousand dollars in general fund loss in FY 22, 23. And we go to the next slide. This last, um, I believe this is my last slide, and this is kind of just an, an outline or an overview of the budget enactment timeline in the odd year session, which we find ourselves in. Um, so the odd year in, this, in uh, 2021, calendar 21, when the legislature meets, um, we're kind of in the January tick mark on the left-hand side where the legislature is convened and then soon um, in late January, uh, I believe January 26th, the governor will be making his budget recommendations and then we'll have legislative bill deadlines established at some point in January or some point in the future. Um, and then we kind of move through the gradual process of um, receiving another February economic forecast and then the Ways and Means Committee releasing targets and then the construction of omnibus bills or in this case the Ag Omnibus Finance Bill. And then in May it will be conference committees and then in later May will um, the legislature may pass on those bills off the floor of the governor and those will be either signed or vetoed. And that'll be kind of the conclusion of the um, budget process for that year. And then um, next slide. And then on the screen is my contact information. I think um, with being remote, I think it's probably easiest to get a hold of me uh, through the email system. And um, I think that I'll just kind of leave it at the quick going through those uh, 10, 12 slides and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions or uh, meet with people um, offline to talk through. So thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Savory. I really appreciate the input here. We've got a few minutes if there's any uh, quick questions that uh, some of them want to forward to, uh, forward to uh, Mr. Savory. Now I guess now would be the time to do it. Mr. Chair, this is Representative Anderson. Please, Mr. Anderson. Thanks, Mr. Anderson. Chair. Ken, thanks for that overview. Now, normally we would be in live in committee and you would have these as handouts. And I'm just concerned that the, some of the new members may want to get copies of your handouts to study them in their free time. Would that be available somehow to our, especially the newer members? Um, Chair Sundin and uh, Representative Anderson, Yes, absolutely. I believe that um, if you were to click on the calendar um, on the House webpage, this PDF is attached. Additionally, too, if members ever um, need extra copies or um, just want a particular slide, I'm happy to email if they're happy to it'd be easy for them to contact me and I'm happy to um, exchange emails with them or with uh, caucus researchers as well. Great. Thank you. 
Any other questions for Mr. Savory? Keep his number handy. He would be uh, he would be uh, the go-to guy for uh, accurate information. So uh, we can uh, do some more introductions uh, from uh, some of the department uh, people that have uh, joined us today. Uh, Commissioner Tom Peterson, uh, would you like to take it away? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name's uh, Tom Peterson. I serve as Commissioner of uh, Agriculture uh, for the last two years. And so uh, uh, great to join you and great to work with the committee. And um, before that, I spent 17 years uh, as uh, the government director for the Farmers Union, for those of you who don't know, uh, working there with all of you. Uh, and before that, I uh, and continue to live on a farm in Pine City and uh, great to have uh, both representatives from Pine County on the Ag Committee. It is uh, truly an honor to work with all of you in all types of agriculture and uh, including all the uh, urban farms we do have in St. Paul. So uh, great to be with you today and look forward to introducing the rest of our great team on Wednesday. Okay, we also have uh, Dr. Beth Thompson. Executive Director of the Board of Animal Health. Good morning, Chair, or good afternoon, I'm sorry. Good afternoon, Chair Sundin. Um, Beth Thompson, State Veterinarian and Executive Director of the Board of Animal Health. Uh, thank you for the invitation to introduce myself today. It's good to see all of you. Uh, I grew up on a, a crop and livestock farm, uh, Chair Sundin. And I currently live in rural uh, Goodhue County. So again, uh, good to see all of you and look forward to giving you all some more information upcoming weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna butcher another name, uh, Peter Jenseth. Peter Chesseth. Okay, I've got it, Peter Chesseth uh, from, uh, from the department and uh, the Board of Animal Health. Uh, yes. Good afternoon, Chair and Committee members. My name is Peter Chestnut. I am the Director of Government Affairs for the Minnesota Department of Agriculture and also the Legislative Liaison for the Board of Animal Health. And I look forward to working with everyone this session. Okay. We also have uh, Dan Skogan, Director of Government Relations with ARI, Agriculture Utilization Research Institute. Uh, uh, thank you. you re regale us with uh, what uh, the Institute does. Sure. Thank you, Chair Sundin and members. Uh, welcome to the Aid Committee, especially uh, congratulations to everyone who won the election, of course, but to the new members, look forward to working with you in a typical year. I'd be making appointments to come and see you personally and develop those relationships, but we are not yet typical. So, uh, We'll be doing a lot of this through email and, and other calls. The Agricultural Utilization Research Institute, or as we call it, AURI, was uh, developed by the Minnesota State Legislature 30 years ago during the farm crisis of the 80s. And uh, we were uh, tasked with fostering long-term economic benefit for Minnesota through value-added agricultural products. We have our headquarters in Crookston, Minnesota, but we have uh, working labs in both Wasika and in Marshall. And uh, we just uh, take entrepreneurs and small business people who have uh, ideas, new ideas and products or processes and try to make those become a reality through uh, applied science. And uh, we've been doing a, a pretty good job of it for the last 30 years. And uh, we appreciate the, uh, the state's support as, uh, as we continue our work. When we start a project with uh, one of your constituents, I will be sending you an email I checked it quickly this morning. I think we have about a dozen projects uh, with members, uh, constituents who are on the Ag Committee right now, but uh, you will be notified. And then if you want a follow up meeting with that constituent uh, with AURI, we're uh, happy to try to coordinate that. And uh, we're going to be hopefully coming back to the committee and talking about some of the impacts that we have had around the state of Minnesota, but uh, looking forward to getting to know all of you a little more. And uh, Representative Anderson, I'll just tell you that this morning, I played pickleball with your basketball coach uh, from, uh, well, the 1950s or 60s, I guess, but Tom Wolhau is uh, still getting out and getting some exercise in the morning. So good to see all of you and look forward to getting to know you. Thank you. Uh, we've got uh, a handful, a good handful of uh, 
people that represent stakeholders that uh, will be approaching uh, the committee with uh, their interests. And uh, we could start off with uh, some quick uh, introductions, self-introductions, and uh, and what uh, what you have for history with the committee and uh, what you expect. But uh, please keep it down to a minute and a half or so, please. Uh, AJ Durr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the committee. Uh, great to see so many familiar faces and looking forward to, to meeting all the, the new ones. Uh, my name is Andrew Dewar. Or, or a lot of folks on this, uh, on this committee know me as AJ. Uh, I've worked uh, in and around the, this committee for about 17 years now. Uh, former House staffer, now uh, advocating for farmers and other groups. Uh, those groups include the Minnesota Biodiesel Council, the Minnesota Soybean Growers Association, uh, the Minnesota Pork Producers Association, uh, the Minnesota Association of Agriculture Educators, which is a group of uh, secondary and post-secondary ag teachers and also uh, farm business management instructors, and uh, also the Minnesota Federation of County Fairs. So uh, uh, thanks again, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity and look forward to working with everybody. Thank you, AJ. Uh, Chris Cohen from Pesticide Action Network. Mr. Chair, he's not, he had to cancel due to oh, a okay. family application. Okay. Uh, how about Bill Bond? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bill Bond. I'm executive director of the Minnesota Crop Production Retailers. We're a 65-year-old trade association that represents the folks that provide the fertilizer, the pesticide, and the seed for farmers across Minnesota. We also have as a subsidiary organization, the Minnesota Certified Crop Advisors. There are about 650 of them that uh, are professionals that work within these organizations to supply uh, important crop information to growers. And a new organization we just started is the Minnesota uh, 4R Certification Program. It's uh, operated by a, a Minnesota Nutrient Stewardship Council that is setting up a third party certification to provide uh, a, uh, a demonstration of the way we use fertilizers appropriately and that we're cognizant of the impact we have on the environment. So we're looking forward to making you aware more of uh, what that is gonna happen and what that's, what that's gonna mean for the next few years. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bond. Uh, lost my place here. We've got uh, Sarah Darnick with the Minnesota Agriculture Education Leadership Council. Thanks, Chair Sundin. Um, Sarah Dornick, um, MailC, as we like to go for by short, MailC was started in 1997 to promote and expand agricultural education opportunities across the state. We also return, refer to ourselves as AFNR, or Ag Food and Natural Resources Education. Uh, when we talk about that, we cover ag literacy, um, our school-based ag education, which is our 35,000 students in the 200 programs across the state, um, grades 7, 12 our post-secondary at the Minnesota State Institutions as well as the University of Minnesota's, and then um, our teacher preparation programs and our farm business management program. So we have 66 FBM instructors across the state. So uh, we do receive dollars um, that we then are, are stewards of, and then we're also serving as a resource for you. And uh, Chair Sundin, if you're okay, uh, my coworker could introduce herself as well and get that out of the way. Carrie, if you're there. Please. Thank Please you, Dean Dean and members. My name is Carrie Schwab. I'm the program coordinator for MLC. I've been with um, this organization for about eight years. And prior to that, I served as a legislative assistant in the legislature. Okay, uh, terrific. Uh, regarding the council there, uh, they do accept uh, one appointment from the committee here. And uh, uh, my intention is to have uh, Representative Todd Leppard fill that spot and uh, bring back uh, the information to the committee as necessary. So, thank you. Uh, Laura Lemke with Minnesota Grain and Feed Association. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Sundin, members of the committee. My name is Laura Lemke. I'm the executive director for the Minnesota Grain and Feed Association. We're a 114 year old organization that represents the commercial grain elevator and feed mill industry in the state of Minnesota. I've been with the association for just over 15 years and I'm entering my second year as executive director. Thank you. Uh, how about Jamie Pafal, pronounced pool today. 
<laughs> uh, the Minnesota Grocers Association. I know it for fall. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chair Sundin and members of the committee. They give me a lot of letters to get to just pool, but I am Jamie Poole, president of the Minnesota Grocers Association. We're a legacy organization having served industry for over 120 years. Uh, we actively advance the common interest of all those engaged in any aspect of the food industry and are the only state trade association representing the food industry from farm to fork. Our members consist of retail food stores, manufacturers, brokers, distributors, and wholesalers, and may employ both union and non-union uh, Minnesotans. The Department of Ag is our main licensing body, and we have a strong uh, and very collaborative working relationship with them. Um, the COVID pandemic certainly brought that to the forefront, which I'm sure as we go through committee hearings, we'll talk about. Um, we sit on the Food Safety Defense Task Force. We work on updating food code. We're a member of the Good Food Access uh, Advisory Program as well. And uh, we are here to be a resource for the uh, grocery industry and happy to work with members. Welcome and thank you. Thank you, Jamie Poole. We next have Patrick Murray with AgriGrowth. Good afternoon, um, Mr. Chair, uh, Patrick Murray with the Minnesota Agri-Growth Council. Thank you for the time this afternoon to give a, a quick introduction of who I am and who Agri-Growth is. Uh, I serve as the Director of Government and Member Relations. Um, Agri-Growth is a nonprofit, nonpartisan membership organization. We represent ag and food industry throughout the state and our membership includes Fortune 500 companies, farm commodity groups, the farm credit system, agricultural lending institutions, cooperatives, food processors, seed and input, seed and input companies, uh, individual farmers and transportation entities. So um, as you can see, we're kind of an umbrella organization um, and all of our members play a critical role in bringing Minnesota's homegrown products to markets throughout the world. Um, I wanted to also just mention that a couple of the issues and I don't think anyone really got into um, specific issues per se, but um, public policy and the platform that our members advanced um, just recently um, I wanted to let you know about some of those issues that we're certainly uh, very interested in. Uh, among them are broadband accessibility, childcare availability, healthcare affordability and accessibility, housing availability, workforce development and labor av availability, uh, a favorable tax climate, and then also infrastructure investments, which includes Minnesota's multimodal transportation network of roads, bridges, ports, and railroads, uh, as well as investments in rural water treatment facilities and statewide flood hazard mitigation. Now, I know that. Not all those issues are in the committee's jurisdiction or purview, but those are ones that certainly our members care about and I'm absolutely thrilled to have this opportunity today. So again, look forward to working with you, Mr. Chair, uh, as well as the rest of the members of the committee of this legislative session. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Next we have Brendan Jordan, uh, Bioeconomy Coalition of Minnesota. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Brendan Jordan. I work for the Great Plains Institute, which is a nonprofit organization. Sorry, I just realized my camera was closed. Uh, we we have done a lot of work with this committee over about the past decade on issues related to advanced biofuels, bio-based chemicals, and other uh, value-added industries that use agricultural and forestry feedstocks uh, as a starting point. Uh, one particularly important uh, program under the jurisdiction of this committee is the bioincentive program uh, run by the Department of Agriculture, which supports a variety of, of uh, advanced biofuel and bio-based chemical and uh, biomass thermal energy projects, including uh, some cellulosic ethanol projects associated with uh, existing ethanol plants, uh, some wood-based projects, uh, bio-based chemical project, uh, up in Cloquet and a you know, variety of other projects. Uh, this is a critical program and, and look forward to talking with this committee about uh, supporting uh, these uh, value added industries for the state. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair and, and thanks to Nancy and the staff for navigating uh, these remote hearings and all the technology. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Uh, we have Christine Coughlin with the uh, Minnesota Humane Society. Good afternoon, Chair and members. My name is Christine Coughlin, and I'm the Minnesota State Director with the Humane Society of the United States. 
We're the nation's uh, largest animal protection organization working for the protection of all animals. And we're the nation's largest hands-on provider of care for animals, over 100,000 animals every year. Um, I always like to remind committee members who are not affiliated with or an umbrella organization for local humane societies. Each one of them is their own independent entity. Um, although one of the best parts of my job is working with uh, shelters in Minnesota collaboratively. Um, there are at times bills and issues that are referred to this committee uh, that are of interest to us. And in that case, I look forward to reaching out and speaking with you about those issues. And thank you for the opportunity to introduce myself. Thank you. Uh, next on my list, there may be more, uh, Julie Tesh with the Center of Rural Policy and Development. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julie Tesh, and can everyone hear me? All right. My name is Julie Tesh, and I'm the president and CEO of the Center for Rural Policy and Development. Um, just wanted to mention, I grew up on a dairy farm like many of you, and actually I am sitting here at my family's dairy farm as well. Um, in rural Wasika County, but the Center for Rural Policy and Development is a nonpartisan, nonprofit policy research organization, and we were created in 1997 by the state. So our board is appointed mainly by the governor. Um, we're very happy that Representative Todd Lippert has been on our board in the past. So thank you for that, Todd. Um, but what we do is we provide research on issues that are vital to rural Minnesota from an actual rural lens. So we have a report coming out next week talking about the effects of COVID on the rural workforce. And you will all be re receiving a copy of that report, but then also an invitation to a webinar where we go more in depth. And so we do a research agenda every year and we will be having um, more research coming out on childcare issues and also on rural healthcare access. So look forward to bringing those reports to you. And if you ever have any questions, you can contact me or you can go to our website at ruralmn.org. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, Nancy Conley, is there any other uh, input from any other guests? Uh, yes, Ms. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have Gary Wordish, Bruce Clevin, Amanda Kohler, Matthew Sheets, and Jesse, uh, Josie Linetti. Okay, I don't, that have that list. I don't have that list in front of me, but uh, we do have another uh, uh, 20 minutes or so that we could uh, hear from them. So if you want to introduce those, that would be beneficial for me. Okay, Gary Wordish. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and the committee. Welcome, uh, welcome a lot of old faces, but a lot of new faces, the new members of the committee. Welcome to you and look forward to working with you. I'm uh, Gary Wordish. I'm president of the Minnesota Farmers Union. Farmers Union has been uh, a grassroots organization organized to uh, advocate for the rural communities and farmers, the economic well-being of rural communities and farmers. And we've been organized nationally since 1902 and in Minnesota since 1918. I've, I'm also a farmer. I, I helped my son on his in his farming operation in Renville County, and and uh, look forward to working with you. Just a few of the top issues, being the chairman said we had 20 minutes. Uh, obviously, the pandemic it really showed the the shortfalls in our local meat processing and poultry processing. So it's, that'd be one of our issues: uh, promoting biofuels, broadband, um, and incentivizing uh, climate smart. Uh, egg policies. I know just in my years of farming from when I first started riding a tractor, you know, following my father to now, it's it's dramatically changed. And on our particular farm this year, we, did, we had a very nice crop. And But the last three years before that, we had eight to 10 inch rainfalls within a 24 hour period on our, on my, on our farm. So there's definitely a need to do some work on uh, climate change policies where, poli where the farmers can be part of the solution. So with that, uh, welcome and uh, Welcome new members and thank you and look forward to working with you again in this legislative session. Great, thank you. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, next we have Bruce Clavin. Uh, thank you, Ms. Connolly. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, Bruce Clavin. Like many of you, I'm a farm kid by background. I grew up on a farm, western, west central Minnesota. It's all by Representative Miller's district. My dad and brother still farm and I helped them in the fall running machinery. So I get out there every fall. I have a lot of interest in your committee. I've had my own law firm here for 30 years. This is my 27th session at the Minnesota legislature. I have a number of clients that are interested in the Ag Committee. On the grain side, I work for the Minnesota wheat growers, the barley growers, sugar beet growers in the valley, potato growers. 
including the offense side of uh, Fargo and turf grass as well. On the livestock side, I represent the Minnesota turkey growers, chicken and egg, and the beef cattle industry. And then I also have some business companies that are suppliers and makers of egg products. Thank, Thank you for you. your time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Amanda and Matthew. It's good to see everyone. Um, my name is Amanda Kohler. I work at the Land Stewardship Project. Many of you may have known me over the last three years as, uh, or four years as Land Stewardship Project State Policy Organizer. And now I am focusing um, specifically on soil health and climate. Um, and so I, I'm looking forward to working with you all. We're looking at farmer-led solutions to build resiliency from and mitigate the climate crisis. Over 500 of our members with farmer leadership have developed a comprehensive soil health bill that we're championing in this legislative session to ensure soil healthy practices are profitable from day one. And, and we're looking forward to talking with all of you about it, securing some federal funds, and um, especially working with our chief author, Representative Lippert. Thanks, everyone. And I'll, I'll pass it to Matthew, my colleague. Um. Hi everybody, Matthew Sheets. I also work on Policy Organizer for Land Stewardship Project. Um, I have been, uh, right now I'm uh, focusing in on some of our uh, rural economic justice campaigns, particularly focusing in on getting economic justice for dairy farmers. Uh, last year I worked with some of y'all and met some of y'all when we were working on some uh, farm crisis pieces. Uh, some of the pieces actually that were talked about earlier um, with uh, regards to loan origination fee and also um, the extension of mediation, uh, something I worked on last year. So I look forward to working with the new folks and um, it's uh, good to see some familiar faces. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, Josie Linetti. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Josie Linetti, lobbyist for the Minnesota Farm Bureau Federation. Uh, Minnesota Farm Bureau is the state's largest general farm organization. We represent nearly 30,000 farm and ranch families in every county of Minnesota. Uh, this year, we're working on a few new issues as well as a continuation of old issues, including broadband, climate change in the environment, the food supply, healthcare, research and investment, tax policy, transportation infrastructure, and workforce issues. Uh, we look forward to working with all of you again this session, as well as meeting some of the new faces to this committee. Uh, certainly appreciate working uh, working with all of the committee staff. Thank you, Nancy, for all you've done uh, to coordinate things this year uh, and looking forward to a good legislative session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, that's the last of the people we have signed up, but we need to go back to uh, Margaret Martin for the final oh, staff intro here it is on my list of things to do and i didn't do it uh, <laughs> margaret martin is going to be a uh, staff for the uh, new republican caucus i understand so uh uh margaret yeah. please yes mr chair um yes i'm staffing uh uh representative miller um and i will be following agriculture this year okay terrific Okay, uh, we've gone through this, uh, I guess, quite briskly, which is okay with me, as long as we don't leave anything behind. But uh, just uh, checking the uh, agenda here. Uh, is there any questions uh, of me or uh, the committee uh, uh, administrator at this point? Crickets. Love it. Okay. Uh, thanks for the good uh, first meeting. Uh, there's no questions. Uh, comments from uh, Representative Anderson. Go ahead. Mr. Chair, you kind of caught me off guard there, but uh, yeah, it looks like a, a good committee makeup, a very a varied makeup of the committee. We have some metro folks and some uh, suburban people and also some rural people that are involved in agriculture. And um, I did have one thought, Mr. Chair, some committees run tight schedules and as far as deadlines and such, what are you looking at in terms of um, deadlines for bills and amendments, that type of thing, when we, when we really get going with our committee work? We've, we've got uh, rules that uh, have been established, uh, Representative Anderson, that, and uh, we'll get those to you. Uh, somewhat extended deadlines for uh, amendments 
and uh, we'll get those to you um, if you haven't got them already. So uh, as far as uh, conduct of the meetings, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a pretty informal guy, but uh, when it comes down to uh, votes that we need to be uh, taking to pass uh, some bills on to other committees, you know, uh, we'll address those, we'll take uh, accurate votes on those as well. But uh, I'd like to lay over a lot of the egg bills that uh, are, you know, uh, ours and ours alone and uh, lay them over as often as possible and then uh, put together the final bill uh, with your help, Representative Anderson. Thanks, Mr. Chair. One last question. It was amazing that uh, you could get all the folks on via Zoom that you did with the lobbyists and such. Is there an opportunity for the general public to, to tune into these and watch uh, the committee proceedings, uh, not just in this committee, but other committees as well? My understanding is that all, Representative Anderson, is that uh, all these are uh, in the public eye, no matter what, uh, as far as participation, um, I, I think Nancy Connolly could uh, uh, probably explain that better than I can. Uh, Mr. Chair and Representative Anderson, that is correct. Uh, House information does provides uh, opportunity, multiple opportunities for live streaming. So in addition to when we take up bills and there'll be an opportunity for members to testify, the um, Hearings are also live streamed for any anybody to watch. Okay, but the public then can weigh in in public participation and ask a question. It's just the uh, committee members and, and the testifiers then, is that correct? Nancy? Uh, well, when a meeting, when a bill is, is posted and we uh, take public testimony, anybody who wants to sign up to testify, if they, you know, if they would like to ask a question, they should sign up to testify. Okay. So there will be opportunities, but we have to do it in a measured way uh, for the access issue. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just, thank you, uh, Representative Anderson. Another question. That, uh, as far as the Zoom links go, uh, Nancy Conley, if, uh, is that available to only people that have uh, requested to uh, testify or is are we opening this Zoom link up to everyone? That could be disastrous. Uh, Mr. Chair, the Zoom link is provided to people who will actually be participating and testifying just for a number of uh, security reasons. Um, and capacity reasons, it's limited to those who are participating. And the fact that the public has uh, access through the live streaming, then that's the additional public access opportunity. Thank you. Let's say that we have an overload of uh, people that are uh, jumping in on an issue uh, at a Zoom meeting. Uh, how do we limit uh, the testifiers ahead of time? I don't want to cut people off, but I want to be as inclusive as possible. Right. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I think that in the past, the way that it's been handled is, is by limiting the amount of the time that's available for each. Like we might have to say it's one or two, two minutes per person. The opportunity to submit written testimony will all it will always be available, and if folks feel like it's uh, important enough to to have three dozen people testify, then um, we'll just have to arrange additional committee time. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, any other comments from the committee? Okay, hearing none, uh, the next meeting is Wednesday the 13th at our regular time. Uh, we will start promptly and uh, we will end uh, uh, within uh, at, the, uh, at the assigned time. So uh, let's be clear on that. I'd like to uh, be very crisp on our times because I don't wanna um, drag people on in a committee meeting when they've got an another committee uh, to go to and prepare for. So. Uh, we'll use the entire time when necessary and uh, we will end on time so uh, 
Uh, hearing that, uh, we are adjourned.